My girlfriend calls me Ryan sometimes. Well, actually, not really. She calls me something else. But my mom sometimes calls me Ryan. <laughs> sometimes Donut will clown and be like, hey, Ryan, or whatever. But no one really calls me Ryan. No, I just have a few tricks. Couldn't come through with the part. We only had nine months to film for this video. So I didn't uh, have that much time to, to get some tricks myself. Yeah, I filmed fucking like 95% of it. There's some things in uh, Riley Hawk's part that I didn't film because he's been in San Diego, but uh, for the most part, I filmed most of it. It's really exciting, man. Shit, you know what? I really like Braden's part. It's really sick. I mean, Herman also, it's probably my favorite Herm part I've ever seen. Shane, it's my favorite Shane part I've ever seen. CJ, a lot of people don't know about CJ yet, but he's a really good skater. A lot of people uh, really came through. I will say that Figgy's fucking part is everything you would imagine it to be. It's like the most intense daredevil stunts imaginable. He did it, man. Figgy risked his life a lot for this video. It's fucking awesome. Definitely like laying there in bed or sitting on the couch thinking about things that need to go down. Or I'll be driving around and I'll see this crazy fucking drop in on the side of a building. And I'll be like, Baca, dude, I gotta bring Baca here, man. <laughs> But when you fucking visualize it and you bring them there and they make it happen, it's like, God, man, I saw that. I saw it and we made it happen, man. It's like the best feeling ever. Just making, making history, you know? Filming some of the best skating that's ever been done is like, like the best feeling in the world. It's a really touchy subject, man. It's like the last of the days, man. Fucking, I heard that they stopped making tapes. So once they stop making tapes, that will be the day I'll be like learning how to film HD maybe and then just be like, like all the other new videos. But uh, till that day, Judgment Day, VX for life. See, I got this new board that just came out. It's a new Beagle board. It's actually a, a cruiser board. It's my first board that's uh, for filmers. It's got little wheel bite uh, resistant little little chunks out of the board. I think they call them wheel wells. It's called the highest filmer. But anyway, being the highest filmer, I'd like to share a memorable story about, I think, being the highest I've ever been. In 09, it was a go skate day trip out to Vancouver. America and Altamont, they uh, flew us out there to play a goat show. So then the next day was go skate day, which I didn't know would be such an interesting day. I woke up really hungover and shit and everyone's like go skate day and I was just like oh like I was kind of like far behind while the parade of kids were going through the city back lagging by with me was like the stoners and shit they're just like beagle hit this beagle hit this hit this and even like dads were like hey hit this and I was like fuck yeah man this is one of the best days of my life you know what I even have a little bird that some kid gave me he's like just keep it and I was like cool man still have it in my room to this day it's like a little psychedelic bird it reminds me of like the highest I've ever been. Thanks for that bird. Anyway, we get to the hotel and I'm high as hell, man. So high. We're at the ch uh, at the lobby. Herm's trying to buy like a cupcake or something. I look out the window. All I see is like these these bushes that are like eye level and just some guy like with a bald head, red eyes, just looking at me over the fucking bushes, like just like this, like looking through my soul. I gotta be just paranoid. This isn't happening. And I, I walk away and I walk back after a minute. He was waiting for me to return. I start tripping out. I'm like, Herm, do you see that? Yeah, that guy right there, like he's staring at me, huh? They're like, yeah, yeah, he's staring right at you. I'm like, whoa, that's crazy, man. I gotta get out of here. I don't know who that is. I just kind of avoided the guy and took the elevator back to our rooms. And me and Herm get to our room. And then the phone rings and I pick it up and it's a dial tone like, Doo! I'm like, holy shit. And then the phone rings again and it's Jeff, Jeff Henderson from uh, America. You guys want to get dinner in a half hour? And I was like, damn, did you just call? He's like, yeah, I just called. Yeah, sorry, it just messed up. I was like, damn, crazy, man. So we get downstairs to have dinner. And I'm just looking at all these people that have that are white and bald. Get back to the room that night. This guy walks in the elevator and he's white and bald. And I'm just looking at him like, is that him? But uh, nothing ever happened. But it was really, really creepy. It happened to be one of the creepiest moments of my life. While I was the highest I've ever been too. To follow up that story about being so goddamn fucking high in Vancouver. The next fucking morning we flew home, right? Me and Herm were up in our room trying to smoke all the weed we can before we get on the flight and we're just like <laughs> just trying to get it all in and we get to the airport and as I get on the plane I hear this this voice like oh are you a lawyer and I'm like that sounds familiar that voice and it's fucking Ben Stein the fucking guy 
for the uh, clear eyes, the motherfucking clear eyes guy. Well, I had the reddest eyes I've ever had. I looked at him, I said, clear eyes? He said, well, actually it's red eye and dry eyes need clear eyes. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, man, cool, man, yeah, nice to meet you, man. I love the fact that the trip where I was the highest I've ever been, the fucking clear eyes guy is on my flight on the, on the ride home, just to wrap it all up. So that was a memorable trip. One of my most favorite uh, trips I've ever taken. And I'd like to thank uh, Vancouver for smoking me out that day. Thank you. It's really deep, man. It's more of like a religion to me. It's like really spiritual DJ screw. A lot of people from the screwed up clique are like deceased. I've actually had contact with all the deceased members of the screwed up clique. After I went to the fucking screwed up clique uh, records, ever since that day, screw looks over me. And he looks over Andrew and Herm and whoever else has been to his shrine. The first time I noticed that shit straight up, we made this uh, Shake Chunk video. We made it chop and screwed and we had it on our website. It was a Shake Chunk chop and screwed. About a month after that we went to Houston, this kid from Houston, he sent the email. He was like, yeah, you know, I love what you guys do, but just a heads up, I noticed you guys called your uh, video Chopped and Screwed. You know, you guys shouldn't really call it that because there's all this controversy about using Screw's name, like all these DJs calling this shit Chopped and Screwed when it's not screwed because DJ Screw was the originator of it. So you have to call it something else. We're like, all right, we're gonna change our video name on the website. It's gonna be Chopped and Lean instead of Chopped and Screwed. So we did that shit, and I swear, like two days later, man, I got like a thank you from Screw. And how I fucking got that shit was crazy, man. I was uh, driving with Reno, and I, I already drank a tall can, and I even had some syrup some, which they call lean, some illegal uh, codeine and shit. After I, I got in the screw, I started sipping some syrup and like getting down with that shit. So anyway, we get to a stoplight and there's a cop on the other side of the intersection, we make a right and he gets right behind us, pulls us over for no reason. So I pop a couple of Tic Tacs and cop comes up with his head right in our face. He's like, so you guys got weed, right? Smell it. I'm like, yeah, because luckily I had a, a weed license. And he's like, all right, what do you got? And I'm like, boom, boom, gave him all that, that. He's like, any more? I'm like, yeah, oh yeah, this too. Yeah, take that too. Takes us out, out of the car and three more cops show up. I'm like, damn, dude. And then they're like clowning with the weed and shit. I'm like, oh, what's the best kind? I would think the green crack is the best kind. <laughs> I'm like, nah, man, the blue dream's better than the green crack, whatever. Then he goes through my bag. He holds up the fucking lean, the codeine, straight up. And he's like, what's this? And I'm like, that's my codeine. And he's like, you got a prescription for this too, right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. And he's like, all right. He's got everything on the hood. You guys got all this weed. You got this codeine. I don't know if it's legal. Like, what, what am I going to just let you guys just drive away? Or like, yeah. And he's like, okay, all right, cool. We'll take your stuff and get out of here. So I'm like, all right, grab all my weed and my codeine. We can put it back in the bag, drive off. Here's why that shit worked out. Anybody else should have gotten a ticket, arrested. That fucking cop that pulled me over, that held up the lean, had one tattoo, one visible tattoo, and it was on his finger, and it said, chop. So the chop held up the lean, and that's what we call that video, chopped and leaned, or whatever. Now, if we didn't change our fucking name for DJ Screw, it would have been straight up, chop and screwed like he was the cop chop with the tattoo and i would have been screwed chopped and screwed like i would have gone to jail screwed but chopped and leaned is like chopped and lean like straight up you're welcome you guys free to go so that's when i knew dj screw was thankful for us looking out for him just not using his name for you know ever since that day i look out for uh little signs of, of thank yous little guidance from dj screw and that's the, the first story that's like the shorter one and then it's like we get into like the gnarly one that like they told me to contact andrew and give him a message slash actually was the first one who was like man he's like riley skating is insane right now like, like the next run i took i slammed on my head so i was like okay i deserve that it's good